We thank you for being the King of kings, oh God. We thank you for being the Lord of lords, oh God. We thank you for being from everlasting to everlasting, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you ordained this day, oh God. For you created this day, oh God, and we just we rejoice and we be glad in it on today. We thank you, Father, for this joyous occasion. For it is he who promotes, hallelujah. It does not come from the north, the south, the east, or the west, but God is judge. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so we honor God on today. We bless his holy and his mighty name on today. We thank God for being the awesome God that he is on today. We thank God for each and every person online on Facebook, hallelujah, on YouTube. We thank God for each and every person in the sanctuary on today. Hallelujah, God. We came to give God some praise on today. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad when they said unto me, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you ready to come to the house of the Lord? I am ready. I am excited. I am thankful to God on today for each and every candidate. Hallelujah. We bless God for the candidates on today, for elevation, for promotion. Oh, hallelujah, God. He predestined this day. He ordained this day. And we just thank him for the awesome and wonderful works that he continues to do in the lives of his children. We thank you, God, for every promise that you've made, Father God. And we thank you that as we continue this journey, this walk with you, Father God, that you will continue to manifest your promises, Father. We thank you for each and every promise that we have yet to see, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. But we wait, Father, patiently. Hallelujah, God, with faith. Hallelujah, God, because we have faith as a mustard seed on today. Hallelujah. We thank you for Faith Community Church. We thank you for joining us. Hallelujah for this beautiful and wonderful elevation and promotion service. We don't take it for granted that you came to the house of the Lord. We don't take it for granted that you've decided to tune in on Facebook and on YouTube. We don't take it for granted, and we welcome you to worship with us wherever you are on today. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, Father, we just honor you, hallelujah, for each and every person who will take part, who will participate in this service on today. Thank you for the fresh anointing in the house of the Lord on today. Oh, hallelujah, God. We thank you for falling fresh in the atmosphere, oh God, that you will do a new thing in the house today, oh God. Hallelujah, that someone will be elevated and promoted in their spirit as the word goes forth today, oh God. And so we honor you for a great and awesome God that you are. Hallelujah. Give God some glory on today. Give God honor on today. Give God Judah on today. For he is truly worthy to be praised as the praise team comes. Hallelujah.
He's worthy. Oh, come on. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, come on. He's worthy. He waited on us. He waited on the ministers that's being ordained today. He waited on the pastors that's being elevated today. He waited on you. He waited. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We just want to worship you. Can we worship him? Oh, if you're able, come on and wave your hands this morning and let him know that you are grateful that he waited on you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We set the atmosphere.
goodness and I've tasted your promise I'm gonna wait on you anybody waiting on the Lord I'm gonna wait on you hey I've trusted your goodness tasted your promise wait on the Lord wait on the Lord upon the Lord shall renew renew their strength they shall mount up on wings like eagles they shall soar they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint that's what happens when you wait hey you get a little stronger that's what happens when you wait Anybody been waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord? Come on, can I see by a show of hands and even on live Facebook and YouTube? Any waiters? Come on, just give the Lord some heart. Any waiters in the house? Yeah. The most testing thing we will ever do is wait on the Lord. Wait on an invisible God. You know we were made to wait on him. We were made to trust him and be patient and wait on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the waiters at? Y'all do know that today, May 23rd, is a waiting Sunday. This is a waiting Sunday. 50 days after first fruits comes a waiting Sunday. Today is Pentecost. Anybody waiting on the Holy Ghost? We are waiters and waitresses waiting on the presence of God. 
This is the Sunday of waiting. He gave them the great commission. Go ye into all the world. And then later on, he says, look here, but wait for the promise of the Father that you've been endued with power from on high. Anybody receive that power? Anybody asking God for power? God, I want power. God, I need power. God, I need power for this new assignment, for ordination, for elevation. I need more power for my health and my healing, for my family to come out of COVID. I need some power. We waiting, 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 we're waiting. Somebody got impatient. You gotta wait on him. And he will release strength. He will release anointing. He will release power. We attempt to rush the surge. He says, I need all of y'all to wait for me. Wait for the promise of the Father. So we honor God. We thank God for this day of ordination and elevation. Come on, lift your hands up. Come on, all online. Come on, just lift your hands up wherever you are. If you're in your kitchen, your living room, in your bathroom, if you're in a cubicle at work, come on, if you're driving on the highway, take one hand and just raise your hand and give God a wave offering because he's worthy. Come on, exalt him. Come on, bless him. Come on, hollow his name. His name is like no other name. Come on, we celebrate him. We shabak him. We honor him for everything he's doing today. God, we've been waiting on you. Some of us just should repent for getting tired of waiting. Somebody was fainting in your waiting. But God, we honor you. We thank you for the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for enduing us with power, endowing us with power. We honor you and we bless your great name. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together all over the building. Come on, put your hands together all over the building. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the house on the day? Oh, we ought to just give him some glory. Anybody glad? Minister Joseph, who's who's being elevated to executive pastor. I saw his dad walk in. That thing blessed me. Because we were praying and praying and praying and praying and we were wondering. But we just waited on the Lord. And I saw him walk through those doors. Come on, y'all, give him some praise. He's worthy. Sometimes we're waiting on the wrong person. <laughs> Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Certainly we honor God. Before you're seated, I want you to just take a moment and wave at somebody in the house. Just, just wave at them. Just wave at them. We're in COVID and, and just, 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 just wave at them. Just be intentional with it. Be intentional with it. Give them a do sign, two sub, peace sign. Give them a peace sign. Hallelujah. Give them some kind of sign. Amen. Just say hi to them. Hallelujah. Online, just give us some hearts. Come on, shout out hello to everybody online. Say hi to them. It's good to see you. Glad to have you in worship. And we have visitors sharing with us. We're glad to have you virtually with us today. We're glad to have you if you're a visitor locally with us. We are glad to have you with us. Praise God. You may be seated in the house of God. One of the things that we want to be mindful of is we have this celebration today. Um, Normally, these celebrations are evening services, and COVID has shifted those things. And so we're excited about the ordination and the elevation service on the day. Minister Kanisha Reed, y'all celebrate. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. <laughs> Minister Althea White, come on, put your hands together. Being ordained today. 
Minister Raya Thompson, put your hands together. Holly, come on, put your hands together. Give him some praise. And then we are excited about the elevation to Assistant Pastor Minister Rosalind Robinson. Hallelujah. I see her family here today. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. And then Executive Pastor Minister Joseph Featherstone. We are excited. Hallelujah. We've been waiting. We got help. Everybody say we got help. <laughs> Woo. And so we honor God for that. And we thank God for that. And we thank God for uh, them. And um, I want you to encourage you that, that you be mindful to give. On today, it's, it's time to worship through giving. And so either you can give now or you can give at the end of service, but we certainly encourage you to be mindful to give on today. Uh, you can All our methods of worshiping through giving are online. You can give via our cash app, FCC1998, or our website, faithforecast.com. And then those who are sharing in worship and those who are in service, upon the end of worship, we will have the basket at the altar, and we will worship from the front to the back. But we want to encourage you to be mindful to give and to celebrate what God is doing. The day is Pentecost Sunday. This is the day we celebrate the empowerment of the church through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so we are excited about that. I'm also excited today because I have my father and my mother in the spirit in the house on today. Uh, Bishop-elect Dwight Riddick and First Lady, Lady Riddick. Y'all put your hands together for them. Thank God for them. He's, Pastor Riddick, Bishop Riddick is being ex exalted uh, and lifted up and elevated to Bishop, but I, I just, uh, I celebrate Pastor Riddick. Um, I, was, I was doing some counting. He's been in my life for 36 years. He's been speaking into my life. I graduated from high school at 18. I moved to Newport News. I went from my dad being my pastor to, to, to Pastor Bishop-elect Dwight Riddick speaking into my life. And I just honor God for everything he's done, everything he said. And, I, and, I, and I'm a little out of order, but the reality, he is the one that compliments me. He's the one who uh, 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 corrects me. He is the one who counsels me, and he is the one who challenges me. He is the one who I am submitted to, and he speaks and gives direction. He's the one I shift meetings for when he calls. Yeah, and, and no matter when he calls, you shift, and you respond, and because we want people, and we appreciate when people do it for us, and we need to know that pastors are responsible for the same thing. You sow what you want to read. And so I thank God for Pastor Riddick. I'll never forget when I was uh, preaching my uh, initial sermon, he, I, I, I had to wait because he kept sending me back. I went back about five good times. And, uh, and uh, you know, and so even, you know, Minister Rosley, who's getting uh, 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 elevated today, I remember when she preached her initial sermon, she got upset with me, Pastor Riddick. She was out walking by the gate outside, just, just walking. And, and so he sent me back about five times. I'll never forget he said to me, he says, he said, you can preach this. He says, but what kind of preacher do you want to be? And he, he elevated my life. And, and some things you don't understand right then. You, you get clarity as you go. And so, Pastor Riddick, I thank you for the challenge. I thank you for the, 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 the part of my life where you counseled me and you helped me grow. And you're constantly speaking into prophetess in our life. And we thank God for that. It is, it is through Pastor Riddick. Uh, that prophetess and I made the proper ordained love connection. Oh, y'all don't even understand. Pastor Riddick, you know, prophetess was at, at school an hour and a half away at Virginia State. He would let me use his brand new Volvo. <laughs> and just, you know, just drive up there every weekend and take her back. And I just, it just really sold into my life. And I thank God for him. And I thank God that, yes, he has academia, accolades, and achievements. And thank God for all that. But I thank the fact that Pastor Riddick is integral, that he has integrity, that he, he, he is one who walks and lives what he preaches, that he doesn't go home and have a problem at the house because, because they reverence him and honor him at the house. His five grandchildren, his two children, they acknowledge him as someone who is an example of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 
So I'm excited that not only is he a great leader, not only is he a great teacher, but he is a phenomenal preacher. And after our praise team has ministered once again, we're going to ask Bishop-elect Dwight Riddick to come minister to us and minister to us our ordination and our elevation message. Y'all put your hands together for my pastor, my bishop, Dwight Riddick. Anybody know we serve a great and mighty God? Just wave your hand real quick if we serve a great and mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Great and mighty is our God, great and mighty is our God, oh, great and mighty is our God, great and mighty is our God, let all God's people sing.
and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is, is our God. See, the Bible says when they were in one room, they all got on one accord, and then the Holy Spirit came in. So we're all on one room. Now we got to get on one accord and then the Holy Spirit will come in. So can we sing this together on one accord? Everybody sing it all over that room. Say great and mighty. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is, great and mighty is our God. Is our God. Lift it up, lift it up. Say great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty yes, he is. serve a mighty God. Stand up on your feet and give him the glory. Come on and open up your mouth and give him the honor. Mighty is our God. If you believe it, if you believe it, open up your mouth and give him the glory. He's worthy of it. Mighty is our God. You know God. If you know God is a mighty God, come on, give him a mighty praise in this place. Come on. Come on, let's exalt him. Come on. A mighty God deserves a mighty praise. Come on, lift those voices. Come on. Come on, let's exalt him. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We honor you in this place. We exalt you in this place. We lift you up in this place. We declare your name holy in this place. What a mighty God. Come on, put those hands together. Give him a mighty praise as we exalt the wonderful, loving, marvelous, majestic name of the Lord our God. The Lord bless you. You may go to your seats if you can. We honor the presence of the Lord and the presence of the Holy Spirit who have orchestrated our steps, brought us together in this glorious and this hallowed place. Would you also help me put those hands together? Come on, let's honor the best pastor in the world and prophetess. We honor Pastor Ronnie T. Northam and Prophetess Northam. God bless you, man of God, woman of God. We honor you today. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Come on, this come on. This is your man of God, your woman of God. Come on, let's honor them today. Come on, that's it. Amen. 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 We appreciate you so much. Appreciate your leadership. Uh, we appreciate your faith. And so we bless God for you. Amen. Amen. I'm just happy to be here today and delighted to have this wonderful privilege and opportunity to share and to be a part of what God's doing, this, this move of God in this place of God. So thank you, Pastor and Prophetess, for the invitation to come. And I appreciate our relationship. Uh, I think as we grow older, our relationship even deepens. And so for that, I'm just so grateful and thankful. And uh, I'm just so godly proud of you. And uh, let me just say this, this is my son and daughter in whom I'm well pleased. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. So we just praise God for you, amen. Thank God for you, thank God for you. As I watch you blossom over the years, and uh, the Bible says iron shoppers iron, and so I learned so much from them, and so I appreciate it, amen. I gotta tell you, there was a time I was concerned uh, I just saw him walking in faith, and it was scaring me to death. But I've been around him long enough now to catch faith. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody in here ought to be catching faith. Amen. 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 So I just praise God for him, and I honor, I honor God for him, and I thank God for he and his lovely wife, Prophetess. Amen. Thank you again for this wonderful privilege and opportunity. Delighted to have my bride of almost 43 years. Amen. Come on, would you bless God for Mrs. Riddick? Amen. 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 Thank you for being with me today. Amen. And my daughter, Katrina, come on. Amen. Thank you for being with me today as well. Amen. Thank God for the, the ministry of this church. I, um, I just sat and I thought just a moment, Pastor, as I was able to share with you virtually some weeks ago and offering the first fruit unto God. And here I am in present on the day of Pentecost. I don't know if y'all caught that. Amen. That's a divine orchestration. And so we're just so delighted and happy to be here and grateful for how you sow into our lives and into the ministry of the Gethsemane Church. And so we bless God for each of you. And uh, today we're here on assignment. So this is not one of the usual visits that I make or preaching times. I'm here on assignment today. I just want to see where, where the folk are that I'm, I'm talking to. Minister Reed, amen, amen. And Minister White, amen. Everybody's in order. Minister Thompson, amen. I, I wouldn't expect anything different. <laughs> amen, amen. And um, Minister Robinson, okay, amen. And I uh, hope I got that name right, Minister Featherstone. Did I get that? Okay, all right. Amen. Amen. We praise God. We praise God. Come on, just bless God for this great music ministry. Thank you for how you've lifted us in our presence. Father, we thank you today for this awesome privilege of uh, worship. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence. And we pray even now, oh God, that you would declare our minds, that we might think your thoughts, word our mouths, that we might speak your word. Might we hear from heaven on this day, we bless you in advance for the deposit that will be made into each of our lives. In the wonderful, loving, marvelous, and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray together, the people of God, shout amen. Come on and shout it again. If you open your Bibles to the Old Testament book of Genesis, chapter 41. Genesis, chapter 41. And I'll begin reading at verse number 38. Genesis chapter 41. Verse 38, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the spirit of God is? My iPad's freezing up here just a moment. Somebody. Genesis 
verse 38. Let me go back and begin reading again. Uh, and, uh, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God have showed thee all, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and made him ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him, bowed their knees, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. That, 40, that 43rd verse says, and made him ride in the second chariot. As the Spirit of the, lead, of the Lord shall lead and guide, I want to talk to you today about riding second chariot. Riding second chariot. I'm going to get her to get my book. Riding second chariot. The setting is in the town square of Egypt. There sitting in chariot is Joseph. He's riding in second chariot, and by virtue of the fact that he's riding in second chariot, it's significant and important to understand that this is a setting of elevation. It is a setting of coronation. It is a setting of ordination. And then ultimately, it is a setting of confirmation. There stands Joseph next to Pharaoh. And he has been assigned the second chariot. I think it's important and significant to understand that as Joseph is seated now in the second chariot, that this has been for him a long journey. Joseph has come all the way from the bottom to where he is now. It's been a journey because Joseph has one to experience separation and alienation from his family. He has been the brunt and the subject of sibling rivalry. His own brothers and sisters sold him into slavery. And not only has Joseph experienced the separation of sibling rivalry, but Joseph has also been accused of sexual harassment. Ultimately, he has been sentenced to serve time. And he has served time without due process. This has been a journey for Joseph. And the people that he favored the most were the people who forgot about him. But as we see Joseph today, he has been on this journey. And finally, he has come down to this place of appointment, the place where he has been elevated. I would suggest to you that Joseph is not just here. He's not just come on this journey, but Joseph is on this journey because of something we call favor. Can somebody shout favor? 
Uh, I don't think Joseph expected to be in this place. In fact, if you would ask him, Joseph, how did you get here? He would tell you, one, I don't really understand how I got here, but two, I'm not surprised that I am here. And the reason he's not surprised that he's here is because he knows something about the grace and the mercy of God. There's favor. Can somebody shout favor? Amen. Because when you serve God faithfully, you ought not be surprised at the good things that are happening in your life. And while this is a defining moment in the life of Joseph, I need not tell you again, his, his journey has been filled with chaos and commotion and complication, but here he is in light of all of that. He has been patient, and I will tell you today that his patience and his perseverance has finally paid off. I need somebody to hear the words of Joseph today because he says what others meant for evil. God flipped that thing. He's turned it around, and he's meant it for good. And I tell you, Good is on the way. I don't know who else I'm talking to today. I, if you're eavesdropping, I've really come to talk to the five. But if you're eavesdropping on the conversation, I, I, I would suggest to you, you don't know what good's coming your way. And while we're here for them today, it might be next year this time we'll be here for you. Joseph has endured so much and he's gone through so much. And while he has gone through so much... He has not gone through it empty. He has not gone through it alone. He has not gone through it ill-equipped. Because this entire time, the favor of God has been upon his life. You must understand that favor is usually granted only during times of great difficulty and weakness. I know, I know when folk get new cars, they shout favor. <laughs> I know when people get to a new house, they shout favor. I, I know when they get some bling, they shout favor. But the only reason they're shouting favor is because they recognize from whence they come. And that given the circumstances through which they have come, uh, the circumstances dictate that they really have no business being where they are or having what they have. And the only thing they can do, the only way they can legitimize where they are, they've simply got to shout favor. I got somebody in here today knows something about favor. Because when you look at your life and you look back at your background and see where you are and look at how you have come, the only way you could have gotten there was favor. And so the elevation that Joseph is experiencing rightly is connected to the favor of God that's upon his life. He's He's riding second chariot. He's riding second to Pharaoh. And he's not in this position because he deserves to. He's not here because of his astuteness. He's not here because of his intelligence, his skill, or his accomplishments. But rather, Joseph is sitting in this chariot because of the favor of God that's been upon his life. Joseph was able to interpret the dreams of the Pharaoh of Egypt, he could interpret dreams when nobody else in Pharaoh's cabinet could interpret them. But Joseph's ability to interpret the dream was God-given. It was a sign of God's favor upon his life. And while God's favor is not always fair, God's favor is the enablement, the God-given ability. It's God's anointing upon one's life to function in the role and in the position that God has placed them. In the same way that Joseph came to the place of prominence in Egypt, those of you who are being elevated and ordained today, you have come to this place in your ministerial journey. And I'm sure after many challenges, but only as a direct result of God's favor in your life. Don't you ever forget that what got you here today and what will keep you here tomorrow and hereafter is not your good looks, not your charm, not your charisma, 
Not your skillfulness, not your ability, but God's favor. You have been afforded the unction to function in your respective capacities. There with favor all over him sets Joseph in the second chariot, riding second only to Pharaoh. Riding second chariot, in my estimation, provides for us several lessons for present day leaders who are being elevated and ordained today. I won't be able to lay all of them out, but let me give you three. First lesson. Riding second chariot suggests that you ought to be leaders who follow. Now, now most of the time we talk about leaders who lead. But riding second chariot suggests that you ought to be leaders who follow. Pharaoh is in chariot one. Joseph is in chariot two. It's Joseph's role to follow Pharaoh. Northam is in chariot one. You are in chariot two. And your role is to follow. There's no greater leader than a leader who leads others. By following their leader. Riding in second chariot, Joseph was never out in front of Pharaoh. The second chariot always follows the first chariot. Joseph had proven faithful in his loyalty, his integrity, and his devotion to the vision of Pharaoh. That's why he's riding Second chariot. He is now a follower who has been placed in a leadership role. He knew how to follow. It was that philosopher by the name of Aristotle who said, he who cannot be a good follower cannot be a good leader. Great followers make great leaders. And Joseph was to provide leadership, but he was to provide leadership only as he followed Pharaoh. In my estimation, this means at least one or two things. One, to follow means that one has to be a good listener. In the second chair, it was incumbent that Joseph would listen to hear the voice, the words, the wisdom of Pharaoh which meant that he had to follow close enough to hear the instructions, to receive the directions, and to comprehend the mandates given to him by Pharaoh. Mind you, Joseph did not become second in command to go off and do things on his own. He had to follow the directives that were given unto him. Oftentimes, the problem with elevating other leaders is that they tend to follow at a distance and sometimes drift off into their own agendas. Some are bent on self-promotion and therefore they end up dividing the group rather than fulfilling the mandate and the mission of the organization. I've seen it far too many times. Those who were trusted leaders later became what I call busted leaders who caused friction and fraction in the organization. I said this past week in a candidate's forum in our city, listening to candidates running for an office in the city. One of the candidates used his entire time talking about the number of phone calls he received from others who were complaining about the present administration. Rather than to share his platform for running for the office, he spent his time talking about complainers. His aim seemingly was to win the race by separating the employees rather than encouraging them to work with their leader. Yeah. 
Those who lead by following and uh, are delivered from their own egos. And they seek what is best for the organization. And in this case, what is best for the church and what is best for the kingdom of God. Those who follow understand that God is not the author of confusion and that the body can only function as it works together in unity and in harmony. Great leaders and leaders who lead by following, when they are elevated, they are elevated to new heights. And they do not take a negative attitude that affects the aptitude of their present condition, but rather they are the persons who in every way seek to bring people together so that the mission of the organization might be accomplished. Great leaders are great followers, and those who are being elevated and ordained today must embrace that you have been called to this place in ministry first and foremost to follow. You are here today because you have demonstrated the ability and the willingness to follow. Please understand that your elevation and your ordination, while it may change your position to your peers, will not change your responsibility to your leader. You are to follow pastor and prophet. You are still responsible to them. And when you follow, you will also learn from your leaders. That's what you're going to do. You're listening. You will learn from them. And the lessons you learn from them are lessons that you will pass on to those who follow you. Jesus spent his entire three and a half years pouring into the lives of his disciples. And the purpose of doing so was to equip them so that they would pour back into those who would eventually be their followers. Remind you, he says to them, you are to do what I have, do all of the things I have taught you, and then you are to teach others. Jesus reminds his disciples that greater works they would do because they would pour their lives out into the countless lives of those that they lead. In times of great difficulty, Joseph would learn from Pharaoh. He would lean in on the direction of Pharaoh. And even though Joseph had been placed into this position because of his wisdom and understanding, he was to learn from Pharaoh and to execute his administrative responsibilities only as Pharaoh would have him do so. And should Joseph run into difficulty and was unsure of what to do and how to handle things, Pharaoh was his go-to go person. Pharaoh was a person to whom he was to get advice. And in the same way that Joseph, who was riding in the second chariot, would learn from Pharaoh, your new position today places you in close proximity to your leader so that you can learn better, see clearer the lessons that you would have never learned at the distance you have been. This is the season of your life. To learn in ways you would have never learned before. This is the season of your life. To give greater attention to the words and the movement of your leader. Some things you will learn by what you hear. Other lessons you will learn by what you observe. You are to watch your leader. Emulate your leader. You will know how to do some things because you have watched how they've done them. And there are times I say to my staff and mem my members, you ought to know some things by now. <laughs> you, you've been around me long enough. You, you should have seen how I do it by now. Why are you doing it that way? Have you ever seen me do it that way? Their role and responsibility is to be close enough so they can see and observe. So as to emulate the responsibilities that they have been given. You must seek to communicate, which involves understanding and discerning new levels. Before today, you heard and understood in one place. But after today, you ought to understand and see from another place. You are coming closer. You should seek to understand in deeper and more in-depth ways. You should listen not only to what you hear, but also listen with your hearts. You must use this time to learn from your leaders all that you can, do everything that you can to glean every single nugget. 
your closeness to them is not for you to become their friends and buddies, but you are in this position to observe from a different perspective. You will grasp ideas and concepts and lessons that your former position did not afford. This will allow you to lead in a better and more skillful manner. Your understanding will become deeper. Your vision will become clearer. Your purpose will be sharpened. You are not to be a burden to your leaders by bringing every problem in detail to them. You are not to burden them by your own life being in disarray. Your role is to lift weight off of them by handling the things that you can handle and only bringing to them the heavy and weighter matters. Notice in the text, Pharaoh places his signet ring on the finger of Joseph. He takes the ring off of his finger and places it on the finger of Joseph. He, he places not a diamond ring, but a signet ring. The signet ring was used, pressed in clay, so as to leave an imprint, which would be equivalent to a person's signature. So when Pharaoh takes his ring off of his hand, places it on the hand of Joseph, dresses Joseph in the garment, places a gold necklace around his neck, Pharaoh in essence is saying to Joseph, I'm giving you the authority to function in my place. Joseph was not to function on his own and in any way that he desired. He was to function on the behalf of Pharaoh. The signet ring bore the signature of Pharaoh. So when Joseph stamped anything with that ring, it was as though Pharaoh himself had spoken. This pastor will count on you to act on his behalf in the exact way that he would act. That's why you're close to him. So that you might observe his attitude, his behavior, his ways, his thought patterns. He's given you the signet ring. So that when you speak, it is as though he and she has spoken. It is not what, is that not what our Lord has done? Did he give us the signet ring? Because the book says now if you ask anything in his name. He'll do it. And what we do in the kingdom of God, we don't do it in our name. But what we do in the kingdom of God, we do it in his name. It is as though he has already put his signature on it. When we pray, we pray in his name. When we sing, we sing in his name. When we cast out demons, we cast out demons in his name. When we bless one another, we bless one another in his name. We wear his name. That's why they call us Christians because we walk like him and talk like him and act like him. We use his name to put sickness to flight. We use his name to rebuke lack and slack. We use his name to keep the enemy at bay. And as we live this means in this mean and cruel world the one thing we don't ever want to do is mess up his name and in your new role new responsibility whatever you do don't mess up Northam's name I, I tell all of my preachers here remember when I signed their license I said now listen my name on this license Whatever you do, don't you mess up my name. Because wherever you go, they're going to say he's from Faith Community Church. And whatever you do, don't mess up the name. I'm, I'm okay right now for a moment. Okay. Riding second chair means being a leader who follows leadership. Here's number two. 
writing second chair suggests that one is to be faithful in all seasons. Joseph is elevated to this place because of his unconditional faithfulness. Understand that Joseph's elevation was at the hand of God, which remember this. When Pharaoh spoke to his cabinet, he says, can we find such a one as this man in whom is the spirit of God? Pharaoh was just the vessel used by God to elevate Joseph. The truth is God was elevating Joseph, and the reason God was elevating Joseph is because Joseph had proven to be faithful in every season. And I've taught this principle to ministers over the years. When you're faithful, God will expand your ministry. When you're loyal, God will exalt you. Tragic are those who are only faithful in good times. Anybody can be faithful when the times are good. There are those that you can only count on when things are easy and when things are going well. There are some who only show up on the sunshiny days. But I want to tell you that we have all been called not to be fair weather Christians and leaders. In the kingdom of God, there is a requirement for all weather leaders. It doesn't matter what the weather is. It doesn't matter what the climate is. We're looking for y'all. It doesn't matter what, what's going on, how well things are going, or how difficult things are, we are looking for you. A leader is not worth much if only he or she can be counted on when things are going well. We need leaders who can adapt and lead in any season. Leaders who can rise to the top doing the swelling tight. Leaders who can be counted on when times are tight and tough. Those who are receiving their ordination and their elevation today are receiving this new level of ministry because you have already demonstrated faithfulness in every season. And there would be nothing more tragic than to be ordained and get elevated and allow the difficulties of this new anointing to cause you to become discouraged and disconnected. By the way, did I not mention that for every new level, you're going to meet some new devils? You think you have seen some things now. You're going to see some things after today. Uh, as you are being elevated today, there are some demons you have not met yet that are just waiting to meet you. And if you are under the impression that things are about to get easy and that the requirements are going to be relaxed, you might be sadly mistaken. I just thought I would be honest today and tell you that in this new move, in this new day, in this new arena, there will be some new challenges. And even though we may face new challenges at this level, the Bible declares, moreover, it is required of a steward that he or she will be found faithful. Faithfulness is in doing whatever the times, the circumstances, and the situations with which one might be presented. And Joseph demonstrated his faithfulness to God in good times and when times were not so good. He demonstrated his faithfulness to God when his daddy was bringing him the robes of many colors. He demonstrated his faithfulness to God when his brothers hated on him and sold him into slavery. He demonstrated his faithfulness into God when he arrived in Egypt and Potiphar's wife saw how handsome he was and she did everything she could to seduce him but he remained faithful unto God he demonstrated his faithfulness when they threw him in prison and he had to stay there for an extended period of time and even though he was serving time for a crime that he did not commit he was patient and he waited on God that's what we just finished talking about waiting on God and remained steadfast and the days of head of him would be filled with challenges Challenges. The reason why he's being placed in this position is because he has already proven his faithfulness in every season. And now as he comes to this new place in the kingdom, he understands that there's going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of a famine. But Joseph was already faithful in small matters. Therefore, God could trust him in bigger matters. 
And if you have been faithful in every season now, we expect that you will be faithful in the seasons to come. Your pastor and first lady will be counting on you to be faithful. Members of this congregation will be counting on you to be faithful. The community around you will be counting on you to be faithful. We have some troubling days ahead. Don't fool yourself. Given the season of COVID, the church is going to be different. We will live and have to navigate our way and pioneer through brand new territory. We're going to see things we've never seen before, have challenges we have never received, have never faced before. This is no time to melt down. This is no time for the faint hearted. Uh, you're going to encounter people now that you're going to see sides of them you did not know exist. Let me rerun that. You're going to encounter some people now. You're going to see a side of them you did not know exist but the expectation is that you would be steadfast and unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord. You are not to become weary in well doing knowing that in due season you're going to reap if you faint not you are expected to show up when nobody else shows up you are expected to go when nobody else will go you are expected to stand and to stick when others are falling away and falling apart the difficult times are not to destroy you but they come to help you to become better and not bitter the trying of your faith is to make you stronger and not to scatter you we need someone with this anointing who can be counted on in good times and when times are not so good we need you to be faithful in the season of sowing and faithful in the season of reaping we need you to be faithful when the sun is shining and faithful when the storm is raging we need you to get here before anybody else gets here and leave only after everybody else is gone we need you to be faithful when there is plenty and we need you to be faithful when it's lean times your song theme has to be this Lord I'll go if I've got to go all by myself if mama don't go, if father don't go, if sister don't go, if other members don't go, Lord, I'll go if I have to go all by myself. And can I tell you that there is a reason why you ought to be faithful in every season. The reason you and I ought to be faithful in every season is because we serve a God who is always faithful with us. That no matter where we are and what we are going through, how many of you know God has been faithful? When we look back over these past 15 months, I ought to have some witnesses. God has been faithful even in the midst of COVID when we couldn't leave our house. God was faithful, kept the money flowing, kept blessings coming, kept us in our right mind. Somebody ought to give God a praise just for being a faithful God. When times were good, he was faithful. When times were bad, he was faithful. When you were up, he was faithful. When you were going through, he was faithful. You ought to thank God. Come on and bless him up in here for being a faithful God. Back in Genesis chapter 39, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. I hope y'all caught that. It said the Lord was with Joseph. These five words run as a thread throughout this entire narrative, both through Joseph's pain and Joseph's prosperity. Whether we're in good times or hard times, I come to remind you that Jesus is with us, that he is our treasure, that he is our surety, that he is our blessing. The one thing you can count on, you can count on the fact that God will be with you. And I encourage you today to be determined no matter what comes stick with it go through it stay the course we hear and read of so many ministers who fall away and fall aside from the preaching of the gospel every month but I pray that this will not be so with you but that you will persevere and press on no matter the season remember that the race is not given to the swift or the strong but to those who endure to the end and if you stick God will be with you He'll stick with you through the thick and the thin. I know he will. I've been on this journey almost 44 years, and I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. i felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But every step of the way, God has been right there making ways out of no ways. If you're riding second chariot, you've got to be faithful in every season. Somebody shout faithfulness. Here's the third thing, and I'm quitting. Get out of here. Riding second chariot are leaders who follow. 
riding second chariots of leaders who are faithful in every season. And riding second chariot means fulfilling your God-given purpose. Right here, right now, Joseph is precisely where he's supposed to be. Everything that Joseph has gone through has ushered him into this moment. Every experience you have has molded and shaped you for this season. And even though Joseph was given the signet ring, dressed for the occasion, gold chain placed around his neck, and seated in the second chariot, his elevation was far more significant than what the eye could meet. While he enjoyed the pomp and circumstances, the accolades, the respect of the people, the truth of the matter, is this one about Joseph just riding in the second chariot. Beyond all that occurred that day, there was a divine purpose in his elevation. Joseph's role was to fulfill his God-given responsibility. He was not being elevated or ordained to be popular. He was not being elevated or ordained just to be in charge. He was not being elevated and ordained because he earned the promotion. There was a purpose in the process in everything that was going on. The main purpose for Joseph's elevation and ordination was so that the people might be fed. Can I roll that back? The only reason he's wearing these special garments and had this special service was so that the people would be fed. You remember, he got this elevation because nobody in the kingdom could interpret these nightmares that Pharaoh had been having. When Pharaoh called all of his cabinet together, astrologers, the scientists, and he shared with them this dream, nobody could interpret it. But somebody said, we remember when we were in prison. There was this fella down there who was interpreting dreams. And Pharaoh said, go get him. And so when Joseph comes, and Pharaoh tells Joseph his dreams, Joseph says, here it is. He says, there are going to be seven years of plenty and seven lean years. Joseph was put in place because he understood how to take the years of plenty Store it up so that when the lean years came, there would be food in Egypt. I'm almost at my seat. That was the ultimate reason and purpose for the elevation. Had there not been on the horizon the lean years and the famine coming, there would have never been a need for Joseph. To be in the second chair. However, it was necessary for the people to have food. And because it was necessary for the people to have food, it was important that there was somebody in that place who understood how to help the people to eat during the time of famine. So I want to tell you today on my way to my seat that as you're being ordained and elevated, your ordination and elevation is for the purpose of making sure 
that the rest of us in here can eat. We, we're not here because of how long you've had your license. We're not here because you deserve to be ordained and elevated. We're not here because you have completed all of the necessary training as a minister. We're here because people need to be fed. That's the purpose that must be fulfilled. This world is hungry for the living bread. You've got to remember the Bible is filled with metaphors and symbols. And when the Bible talks about bread in particular, it is not just referring to the physical bread. But rather when the Bible talks about bread, the Bible is referring to the the spiritual food. Jesus said man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The spiritual food that the world needs today is the word of God. Your purpose for this moment is not just to be ordained or consecrated or elevated. And I want to say to you today, no matter what the title, the assignment, the role, the capacity in which you have been called to serve, ultimately your capacity points to one thing. Make sure you have people to be fed. You may not even do the feeding yourself. You may not do all of the preaching and the teaching, but your position to which you have been called must be to execute in such of a way to allow the word to go forth. If your role is to turn on the lights, you're turning the lights on so the word can go forth. If your role is to clean the carpet, you're cleaning the carpet so the word can go forth. If your role is to lead praise and worship, we're just setting the atmosphere so the word can go forth. If your work throughout Monday and Friday is to administrate in the office, you are administrating Monday through Friday so that when Sunday comes, the word can go forth. Everything that you do is to support and to make way for the feeding of the people. You've got to understand that we're living now in some lean times. You have stored up in you who are being consecrated and ordained and elevated today a great store and treasure. Paul says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He says we're troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. We're being persecuted, but we're not the ones in despair. We are persecuted, we are distressed, but we're not. He says we're perplexed, but we're not in despair. We are persecuted, but we haven't been forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Listen, you've got something in you that this entire world needs. These are lean times. And the Apostle Paul warned us that these times would come, and I'm here to report today they're here. He says, I charge you, Timothy. He said the time is going to come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they will heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears. The time is here. He said that they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn under fables. You know what they call it now. They call it fake news. If you, 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 okay. But watch thou in all things. Do affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. These times are here and now. These are lean times. And the prophet Amos spoke of these lean times in Amos chapter 8 verse 11. He says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but a hearing of the word of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and it shall not be found. This is a time where people do not want to hear and embrace sound doctrine. These are the times when people want to choose a church that's preaching a gospel that only makes them feel good but a gospel that will not challenge their life and their lifestyle. These are the times when the word of God is being twisted and turned so that people get what they want rather than what God has said. I don't know if y'all have heard of the Queen James Bible, but these are the times of the Queen James 
Bible. Y'all, some of y'all will catch that by the time you get home, you know. Yeah, yeah, because people are twisting and turning the word of God to make the word of God fit them. And you've got to understand people do not want to hear sound doctrine. Look around you, there are lean times, police shootings, time and time again, black on black crime. These are lean times. There is incurable disease. We are choosing to worship more online than to worship in person. Listen, families are being destroyed. Racism is on the rise. The economic condition of our country is being threatened. These are lean times. People all around us are dealing with stress and mental illness like never before. There are so many who are living in a sense of hopelessness. If ever there was a time when the word of God needs to be preached, it needs to be preached now. These are the times that we have got to remind the world that Jesus is still the only hope for these dark and difficult times. If ever there was a time and for the church of Jesus Christ to rise up and declare the good news of the gospel, it is now. People are in need of God's word today like never before. And you, my brothers and sisters, are being elevated and placed in second chair to help see to it that the word is preached. So I charge you, therefore, before God. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and the kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Rebrew, reproof, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The only remedy for the lost and the dying world is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I go to my seat reminding you to be steadfast, be faithful, hang in there. Because the old church had it right how to reach the masses, men of every birth for an answer. So Jesus gave the key and I if I be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me lift him up we used to sing it like this I wonder who will help me lift him up deacons will you help me preachers will you help me executive ministers will you help me we need somebody to lift him up still he speaks from eternity and I if I be lifted up will draw all men unto me this my brothers and sisters is the reason that you address being elevated and ordained today to ride the second chair because people need to be fed. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Standing with me all over the sanctuary. Jesus is still the hope for the world today. He is still the answer to every problem. He is still the one to go to for every condition of life. We preach Christ and him crucified. Unashamedly, we preach the gospel of good news. You're here today. You're listening today. You're watching online. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, I beg you to do it today. You're going to need him. When the famine hits, you're going to need him. When the famine of your life hits, when times are lean, you're going to need him. What better time to accept him than now? You're going to need to hook up with a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church, people of faith. And I offer you this pastor and this church people who've learned to walk by faith and to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, if you're watching us online, if you're sharing by Facebook or one of the other social media platforms, all you simply have to do is respond in the chat box. Someone will get back in touch with you very soon. If you're here live, if you're here on site today, you're not part of a church. Maybe you were invited here. Since you've been here, God's been speaking to you through, through, the, through the praise, through the worship. God's looking for people who will be faithful. Maybe you're here and somewhere along the way something happened, church hurt or whatever it was. And you kind of say, I'm done with church. But you can't be done with church. And the reason you can't be done with church is because God ain't done with you. <laughs> In fact, he ain't done with any of us. He's still working on all of us. If you're here today, accept them into your heart. Accept this church. Who's here? Who's here? Who's here? Come on, give Pastor a hand as he comes at this time.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, remain standing for a moment. Remain standing. Come on, just put your hands together for that phenomenal, powerful. Just, just the pure word of God. He fed us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for blessing us. Thank God for his word. Thank God for how he's changing us through his word. And so we thank you, Pastor Riddick, for giving us clarity on what's happening today through the word of God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. At this time, we're going to move forward to the acts of ordination. And so uh, as we prepare to work through the acts of ordination and and the elevation of, of our two pastors. At this time, I want to ask that all the ordination candidates would be brought closer to the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of the chairs, the chairs being brought? Beautiful. At this time, we'll walk through the acts of ordination and the moment of sharing and prayer of elevation. We ask that we will follow our programs, and even those that are sharing via uh, social media, we ask that you would just follow along in our service. At this time, we will have the presentation of candidates by Minister Tawana Adams, who was the clerk of the council, followed by her sharing. We will then have the charge to the candidates Minister Tawana Adams will also do that. And then we have the charge to the church. Elder Alex will do the charge. Again, all of those for our ordination candidates. And then we will have the presentation of the Bible by Dr. Robin Featherstone. And then we will follow that by the ordination prayer by Prophetess Ebony Northam for those that are being ordained on today. We ask that we will follow in that sequence. Candidates for ordination, Minister Kanisha Reed, Minister Althea White, Minister Aurelia Thompson. And I will be giving the charge to you all. Daughters. Actually, could I have them stand? The three of you, please. Thank you. Daughters, in the order that all God's people assembled here, may witness that you and the strength of the Lord accept the responsibilities of this office. You are requested 
to stand and answer the following questions. Do you believe that in the call of this congregation, God himself calls you to this holy ministry? Do you believe that the Old and New Testaments are the word of God, the infa only infallible rule of faith and life? Do you subscribe to the doctrinal standards of this church, rejecting all teaching which contradicts them? Do you promise to be faithful, a faithful minister, to conduct yourself in a manner worthy of your calling and to subject to the government and discipline of the church with confidence? Daughters, what is your answer? I do. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. A charge to the church. Faith Community Church International has the privilege and the responsibility before God to stand behind, support, nurture, and defend Minister Kanisha Reed, Minister Althea White, and Minister Aurelia Thompson. Their calling, their integrity, and the mission as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 7, I charge you, Faith Community Church International, to obey those who rule over you and submit to the leaders God gives this church. Their tasks are to continually watch over your souls without resting to exercise great joy and not groaning in their service, for that would be of no advantage to the body of Christ, since they must give account over their service. I charge you to honor our leaders. Regard them with great respect in your speech, in your actions, and in your service. I charge you to provide protection for God's servants. There is nothing that they need more than your prayers. Paul was of this persuasion. To the Colossian church, he wrote, Since the day we heard about you, we have not, we have not stopped praying for you. And lastly, accountability they must be held accountable to the task that has been assigned to them. I ask you, Faith Community Church International, as a church body, do you accept this charge, committing to pray for, to esteem, to establish, to recognize, and to follow these ordained ministers as they follow the Lord? If you agree, let the church say amen. Praise God. Amen. This is a sacred occasion, but we are here to celebrate God. Amen. So we celebrate God for everyone who's seated up here in front of us. I am standing here to present the Bible to our candidates who um, are being ordained today. The Bible, the word of God. Amen. That's what we use. Amen. All right. Y'all know I like participation. All right. So presentation of the Bible. The Bible is the literal teachings and it's the teachings are the final authority for faith and practice over our lives. Not any other book, not the Quran, not any other book, the Bible. Amen. The Bible is life's manual. That's what we live by, the manual. Anything we need, we can find in the Bible. 
Somebody say it's in the book. It was written by human authors under the direct supervision and guidance of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't written by us. It was written by man under the Holy Spirit. It is the supreme source of truth for all Christian belief and practices. And 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It's in the book. The Bible is God's word to all men and women because the Bible is inspired by God. It is truth without any mixture of error. There's no error in the Bible. If it's there, it's so. You, we, are ordained to preach and teach God's word. We're not a news reporter. We're not here to say what we just want to say. What we say is what's in the book. We don't report for WRAL, WTVD, WXII, or ABCD. We report for G-O-D, and it's in the book. So anything that you need, it's in the book. While you're going through and you have stepped into your new assignment, you can always reference the book. This is your Bible. This is your book. This is your life reference. So today we present to you your Bibles. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You all would stand, please. My sister, Minister Kanisha. My sister, Minister Althea. And my sister, Minister Aurelia. We love you, and this is your Bible. This is your word. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. As we're here for ordination prayer on this morning, we ask that um, all ordained ministers, pastors in the house, if you would please stand at this time. Um, due to COVID, we're just going to remain um, in, our, in our places. I mean, we usually would gather around um, the candidates and lay hands and all that stuff, but we just want you to stand as we pray on this morning and as our pastor um, will anoint with oil. Amen. We thank God for our candidates. Amen. Amen. We want to ask them to stand on this morning. As pastor and pastor ready, anoint them. We just want to go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you on today for these candidates that you have chosen for this ordained process to be ordained into gospel ministry, Lord. Lord, right now, God, we just pray that you touch them from the very crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet. In the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we just ask them right now that you prepare them for every assignment that you put before them, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. God, right now we pray, we pray that they will hear your voice, that they will follow your instruction, that they will be in tune with you like never before. Lord, we pray right now that they will walk the straight and narrow with you, God. We pray right now that every gift that's in their belly, God, that you would stir it up right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. 
Lord, we thank you for the word that Pastor Riddick prayed on this morning in the name of Jesus, God. A beautiful word, a, a timely word for a, an occasion such as this, God. Lord, we pray right now that they will, will, will be leaders that follow, God. In the name of Jesus, every good leader must follow. So, Lord, we thank you for followership on today. Lord, we thank you that they will be faithful in all seasons, God, in the good times, in the bad times, when things are going great in their lives and even when they're not going so great in their lives, oh Lord, that they will stand strong, oh God, that they will be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord, God. And Lord, we thank you for them fulfilling their God-giving purposes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, everything that you tell them, God, that they will be obedient, even when they don't understand, God, even when it seems crazy, even when it seems like it's in left field, God, I pray that their faith will kick in another gear like never before, God, in the name of Jesus. Do it for your glory, God. Your word says that um, if we're faithful over a few things, that you will make us ruler over many, oh God. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for the many. We thank you for the many things that you will put them over, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray when they get weak, oh God, that you will hold up their arms, God, in the name of Jesus, and that you will come and give them a renewing and a refreshing like never before. Give them a fresh wind. Let your Holy Spirit come and lead God and abide like never before in their lives. And Lord, we thank you, and we give you all the honor and glory, and it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. Praise God. At this time, we present the certificates of ordination. It says, as we understand from the recommendation of the Request of Faith Community Church International at 4903 North Roxborough Road, Durham, North Carolina, which had full sufficient opportunity for judging the God-given gifts and after satisfactory examination by us in regard to Christian experience, call to ministry and views of Bible doctrine, we hereby certify that Minister Kanisha Reed was solemnly and publicly set apart and ordained to the work of the gospel ministry by the authority and the order of Faith Community Church International at 4903 North Roxborough Road, Durham, North Carolina on the 23rd day of May, 2021. Hallelujah. 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 Certificate of ordination. We understand, and upon the recommendation of Faith Community Church International, we represent and understand the full and sufficient opportunity for judging the God-given gifts of Althea White. And after satisfactory examination by us in regard to Christian experience, Call to ministry and views of Bible doctrine, hereby certify that Althea White was solemnly and publicly set apart and ordained to the work of the gospel ministry by the order and the authority of Faith Community Church International. <laughs> and likewise, Minister Raya Thompson, the certificate of ordination after examination by Faith Community Church International we affirm the full support and full sufficient opportunity for judging your God-given gifts. And after satisfactory examination by us in regard to Christian experience, call to ministry and views of Bible doctrine, hereby certify that Aurelia Thompson was solemnly and publicly set apart and ordained to the work of the gospel ministry by the order and authority of Faith Community Church International. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Come, come on, somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Thank God for the second chariot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ladies, you may be seated. Hallelujah. At this time, according to our program, we have the presentation of our assistant pastor and our executive pastor of Faith Community Church International. Thank God for Minister Rosalind Robinson and thank God for Minister Joseph Featherstone. Minister Rosalind Robinson as assistant pastor. I'm excited this morning and I'm excited today because she's a woman after God's own heart. She's in love with God. She's passionately about the mission of this church. She deliberately watched this and, and domestically assist her husband, Pastor Oren, in the upkeep and the management daily week things here at this ministry. Her sleeves are always rolled up. She's always gloved up and ready to serve. I trust her judgment. I, I trust her decision making. She always chooses what's best for this congregation, for every location. Minister Joseph Featherstone, executive pastor. <laughs> Happy and jubilant man of God. He's a comedian called to preach. A man of balance, a man of just weights, a man that leads and loves at the home first, does unto others as he would have to himself. He's a father of fairness, equity, and equality. Pastor Riddick, we have a Joseph. Minister Joseph's a stickler for function, flow, and structure. He's a strong leader. He can, he's able to cast vision and manage the people to achieve the results. Both of these persons respect this congregation. And the congregation has respect for them. The ministerial team has respect for them. The deacon's ministry has respect for them. And prophetess and I have respect for them. I want to share with you both today, I, I thank God for this prophetic text that uh, Pastor Riddick has ministered, Bishop Riddick has shared. I've been asking God, what is the gift? And as soon as he speaks it to me, I will give you that gift. And I thank you, Pastor Reddy, for opening up that scripture and that revelation. What we, There's something we're to give to you as a congregation, and I'm asking God, what is it? And when he releases it and speaks it, we will give it to both of you. And the church says, amen. amen. At this time, prophetess and I are going to offer a prayer, elevation. I want to ask Pastor Reddy, if you, even Sister Reddy, if you come, just join us. Uh, Lady Reddy, just come with us. And I want to ask all our congregation to stand and just, just point your hands toward. In fact, this is family. This is family. This is family. Pastor Rick, I was listening to you as you ministered. He, and he said the purpose was for feeding. Later on, it says that the purpose was also for posterity. For the, for the, for the, for the family. His parents. That the generations might move forward. Thank 
thank you for taking care of the family. Mission of this church is to help people find their call, foster family unity and financial freedom that flows into the community. Thank you for being So, Lord, we pray for them. Lord, we lift them up. Lord, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that according when Jesus was on the earth, he, the text says he ordained them to be with him. that he might send them forth, that they might do the work of ministry. God, we thank you for ordination and elevation today. God, we thank you for Minister Roslyn Robinson. We thank you for Minister Joseph Featherstone. And in the name of Jesus, every prophetic word that was preached, God, we pray it upon their lives right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for Pastor Riddick's, Pastor Riddick's words of charging today. We thank you, Lord, that they will walk that out. That they will be the very epitome and manifest it. Thank you that they will walk in faithfulness. Thank you that they will feed the flock. Thank you, Lord. That they will be faithful in every season. Thank you, God, for po promoting them because they have been faithful. Oh, God, they've been faithful. They denied themselves and they have picked up the cross and they have served your kingdom and they have served this ministry. God, I thank you for elevating them today. And so, Lord, I pray right now that you will help us work through all the shifting of the peers and the shifting of leadership. Thank you, Lord, that has shifted with the peers and their ministerial team. But, God, I thank you that it is the same with us. The prophetess and I. So, Lord, I bind up all fear and anxiety. And I pray that you would just help them keep being who they've already been. Yes. Keep doing what they've already always done. Yeah. Father, I thank you for the favor on their lives. And because of the favor on their lives, it brings favor to this congregation. Yeah. 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 So Lord, I ask that you would bless them you would keep them, that you would use them. And that they would take this congregation, that they will walk with this pastor and this prophetess, and we will go to a new dimension. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. And the people of God say amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want to ask Pastor Orn to come. Hallelujah. I want to ask Minister Robin to come. Come, sir. Pastor Orn is preparing to give the right hand of fellowship.
get through this. Amen. seen this in her from the very beginning. When I saw her walking through Crabtree Mall. <laughs> that walk with authority. With tenacity. She be my right hand. And she has been. She's been my right hand. Yeah, she's been. Even when I didn't deserve it, she's been my right hand. So God, I thank you. So today I come, I've been charged to do the right hand of fellowship. In Galatians 2 9, it says, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to, to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to them, to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. And so today we come today to, to extend the right hand of fellowship to Minister Kanisha Reed, Minister Athea White, Minister Raya Thompson, Pastor Joseph. <laughs> Featherstone. And Pastor Rosin Robinson. Amen. <laughs> Paul and Bunnels was given the right hand of fellowship by James and Cephas and John and, and the right hand of fellowship is to express graduation expression of minister or elevation expression of not competition and not being intimidated but yet expression of I'm glad that you're here yeah. an expression that I'm glad that you're gifted and I'm not intimidated by your gift an expression of it's time that God has equipped you to do this season. Expression that now it's time to walk in the next level of your purpose. Thank you. Now it's time to feed the people. Amen. Amen. In the Old Testament, God was right hand, strong side. Jesus now have is seated at the right hand of Jesus. So those so everything is of the right. Amen. And so we're excited today about what God is getting ready to do in this season. God is getting ready to do a new thing. We've tried this before. We've done this before. But God says, this is the time. Yeah. And God says, Faith Community Church will never be the same again. Oh, yeah. He says, after this day, that the church will never be the same again. That we're going to walk into a new level of authority, a new level of purpose, a new level of integrity, a new level of, of understanding. God said, it is time that we begin to take the streets back. That's what I heard God say. Yeah. God says, Northern Durham belongs to us. Amen. Amen. And God says, under the leadership of these ministers and these ordained and, and these elevated pastors, that he says that we're going to take the nation. Amen. 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 I would like to have all the, the ordained ministers come and stand behind them, please.
Yeah, all, all ordained. If you're ordained in, inside the building, come and stand behind. Because this is going to be a, this is this is us showing that we that we support. Amen. 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 We want to welcome y'all to the other side, other side of ministry, other side of purpose, other side of understanding what God has called you into. Amen. It's, it's, there's no coincidence that our, our theme is to the other side, and now you all are coming to the other side. Man, can I, I wish I could see that smile. <laughs> Man, I just wish I could see it. Man. <laughs> Thank you all for accepting this calling. Thank you. Thank you, pastor and prophetess, for seeing us what no one else saw. Thank you for being great leaders. Amen. All three are day minutes. We're going to say welcome to the other side. One, two, three. Welcome to the other side. Amen. Amen. I guess I'll give you some elbow. <laughs> Me and Joseph got a bromance going on. Thank God for you all. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Come on, faith community. Let's celebrate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're on Facebook, YouTube, come on, celebrate with us. God has elevated us. God has blessed us. I'm excited about what God is doing. Pastor Riddick, on the first Sunday in June, our church will be 23 years old. 23 years old. 23 years old on first Sunday in June. And I believe that everything faith has been waiting for and believing God to say is getting ready to happen over the next 12 months. It's going to just impress us. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Y'all put your hands together again for my bishop. Hallelujah. And certainly, Minister Joseph, your father-in-law texts me. He loves you. He appreciates you. He says this sermon that uh, Pastor Riddick preached, every, every person that's ordained needs to listen to it every six months. Bishop, Bishop from Walltown in Winston. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a word. Anybody excited? Anybody excited? Hallelujah. I want to thank God for all our leaders that helped make everything happen. Uh, it's been a lot of work, a lot of work with Easter, a lot of work with ordination. And we want to thank you, uh, Brother Frank, uh, Pastor uh, Minister Frank Adams. I'm glad to have you. Y'all put your hands together. Wave your hands to the end of Minister Tawana. Thank you so much for being here, sharing with us. We want to thank God for all of you being with us. Come on, we're getting ready to benedict and we're going down from this experience. Hallelujah. We are excited for Pastor Rosalind. <laughs> Pastor Joseph, hallelujah, hallelujah. They're not in this for titles, but that is their title, hallelujah, and they're riding second chariot, hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, thank you. Can you bring me an envelope? Uh, they reminded me, don't forget to worship through giving. Look at your neighbor and say, don't worship, don't forget to worship through giving. Hallelujah. Tides, offerings, double doors. Everybody know that we're closing on our property. Y'all put your hands together for that. We're raising $30,000 by the 26th of May. Help us to make all of those things happen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we thank you for giving the ability to give us on your screen. And then we will also have a basket here at the altar. The leaders are bringing it now. The basket here at the altar. And we will give, give. From the front to the back hallelujah and we will do that and we will exercise the giving even after we have closed service is that all right so bring your gift good pastor Rick. yes i just want to say two things that i know i preached a while but there are two things that that came in my spirit to say um 
all of you who, who, if, who are not up front, will you just raise your hand for a moment? If you're not, if you're not in one of these five seats, here's, here's what I want you to say. Will you repeat these words? I, I have been, been elevated. I want to say that because I don't want you to leave today thinking that these were the only folk who were elevated. Here is the saying. A rising tide raises every boat in the harbor. So, so not only were these persons elevated, it meant that everybody was what? So here's the second thing. Pastor, I need to, you, you, uh, I need y'all just stand right here just for a moment. And I want to show you something. Uh, could I get you all to stand right here for a moment? Sir, could I get you to do something for me? Yes, sir. I need you to walk to them. Yeah. Now, this is what you don't want to do. They have been put in place to help pastor and prophetess to be more effective. And many other challenges... When an executive and assistant pastor is put in place, the folk who've been here for a while, who have always been used to coming directly, will walk right past them and go right here. You have been elevated, which means you can't function like you used to before the day. And so as you are a mature church, would you turn around? Now, pastor has already told them worship is going to be 11 o'clock. You don't want to walk past them and say, Pastor, what time is worship going to be on Sunday? <laughs> they have the information. You want to stop right here. And you don't want to think that pastor and, and prophet is now untouchable. They're not untouchable. They're doing kingdom work. And what you're doing is you are releasing them to do greater. And so you are accepting to use and to go to the folk that they have put in place. That's the temptation you will have to resist. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. That's my bishop. <laughs> Providence is mine too. Yeah, we, you our bishop. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God. Come on, lift your hands up. We're going down from this place. God has met us again. All of those who need to worship through giving in the sanctuary, you may do that following the benediction. Now the God of peace. Yeah, go, go, I'm sorry. Good. Go. Go. You are important to me. I need you to serve us. I pray for you, you pray for me, I love you, I need you to survive, I won't harm you with words from my mouth, I love you, I need you to survive, I pray for you. Pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you, I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you, I need you to 
Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Come on, receive the benediction. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let the people of God say amen. Let the people of God say hallelujah. Have a blessed day. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may worship from the front to the back.